And now back to Deadline Live with Jack Blood. So kind of you to join us. Thank you for being with us today. Deadline Live, Jack Blood, AmericanFreedomRadio.com and affiliates. David Ray Griffin is with us on the program today, debunking once again the debunkers. Not, not too hard to do this time. Of course, we're talking about the National Geographic Channel, otherwise known as Fox News Channel. <laughs> they own a majority of that. Uh, their hit piece entitled 9-11 Science and Conspiracy, I have uh, just uploaded on the DeadlineLive.info a complete breakdown of this. 9-11 Junk Science and Conspiracy, the fairy tale narrative that goes down like Soma. And I use that because they are at the end of this uh, so-called, as I call it, a, a docuganda, uh, <laughs> it's propaganda documentary uh, t- saying that, you know, the usual explanation, well, we conspiracy theorists have to have kind of a fairy tale narrative to explain the poor world and, it, and its uncontrolled nature. The fact that no one is controlling the world is what's driving us all crazy and why we have to come up with these conspiracy theories. So I, I mocked the title. Uh, you can check it out at DeadlineLive.info. David, um, a couple of different experiments. I call it Experiment 1.1. You see a real example of controlled demolition, a 10-story building being brought down by so-called experts, rather sloppily, if you look at it. It is kind of leaning over to one side. They do it in an empty field, so it doesn't have to be brought down in its footprint. Uh, God forbid they show a controlled demolition from Las Vegas that looks a lot like build, Building 7, or God forbid they even talk about or show Building 7 on this so-called documentary. Uh, this is backed up by a guy saying that uh, if they brought it down by explosives, it would be very hard to rig, time-consuming, and there would be wires all over the place. Of course, they completely ignore the explanation of nanothermate, which doesn't need the wires and the evidence. Of course, they wouldn't use something that would create so much evidence, even in a crime scene that they themselves controlled and uh, swept up and mopped it all up. And then they had another one, a computer CAD uh, which is ridiculous on face because even they admit, David, that they don't know what happened inside. They can only speculate. They can only guess. So we see this kind of 3D uh, cartoon of what might have happened. And in that, they say that uh, the fuel was vaporized. Now, if the fuel was vaporized, how could the test with the pool of rocket fuel directly a few feet under the little beam which does sag be anywhere in comparison to what might have happened at the World Trade Center towers I mean they themselves admit that the fuel was vaporized it didn't just sit there in pools waiting to burn the the, the steel beams well that's right and and NIST itself admitted that uh, <clears throat> all the jet fuel would have burned up within 10 minutes and some experts say it would have burned up much faster than that. But furthermore, uh, jet fuel isn't, you know, it's basically kerosene. And um, it does not get uh, things up to that temperature. Um, uh, even if it had been, uh, you know, burning for for an hour because of the reasons I mentioned before. And the hottest that a, a building fire like that uh, could have possibly got. Um, would have been about 1,800 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, 1,000 degrees centigrade. And uh, steel does not begin to melt until about 2,800 degrees, 2,700 degrees. Now, why do I mention that? Because we're not talking about steel melting. Well, I'm talking about that because the fact is steel did melt. As you know, there yeah. were reports by fire people and all sorts of uh, experts coming through, uh, that there was melted, most of them said molten steel. Now, Stephen Jones says, well, you know, it was probably a byproduct of uh, thermite and nanothermite, uh, which would mean iron as a byproduct when, when, when steel is melted. But whatever exactly it was, steel was melted. NIST itself, and uh, you know, ignores the fact that... Um, in the original FEMA report, there was an appendix that reported pieces of steel that had so seriously melted that they, they had big holes in them, looked like Swiss cheese. That is serious melting for a, a one-inch piece of steel. Yeah. NIST just ignores. So one of the reasons, the subtitle of my new book, 
is why the final official report about 9-11 is scientific and false. And one of the major reasons the report is so unscientific is they simply ignore all the evidence that doesn't fit their, their fire theory. So they ignore all the testimonies about explosions going off in the building, and they ignore all the, fa- all the evidence of various types that steel, in fact, had uh, melted. And then you have a little Mickey Mouse show coming along like this, that picks up one tiny little thread <laughs> of the the critique and misses almost all the points we've made and tries to make it look like, oh, everything's in order. Strangely enough, they did mention some of the eyewitnesses seeing the flashes in the buildings. They did mention and show some of the molten steel. They just didn't counter it. Uh, that didn't actually even fit or make sense. Uh, Let me talk about this one. Uh, This one almost made me want to smash my TV. I called Experiment 2.1. A couple of guys in the desert with uh, either thin wood or a fiberglass chicken coop resembling, uh, uh, supposed to be representing the steel-reinforced concrete pentagon. And then they had a two-foot pipe uh, disguised as a cruise missile. They shot that along at about 500 miles per hour, proving, of course, that a plane uh, did hit the pentagon. Uh, and then they, they put some C4 in it and just blew it up, proving that uh, if if explosives were used somehow, if the cruise missile uh, had a uh, an explosive tip or there was explosives in the Pentagon itself, that it would have just blown it to smithereens. We wouldn't have had that nice, clean hole. So they are explaining the nice, clean hole by using a complete uh, out-of-scale comparison with the chicken coop and the, and the two-foot piece of uh, pipe uh, going along at 500 miles an hour, which is completely off-scale compared to what actually did happen at the Pentagon. What was your thought when they showed you that one? Oh, well, we were dumbfounded. And if they would show the whole uh, scene of our conversation, we kept saying, what is that supposed to prove? Are you, are you trying to prove that a missile didn't hit the Pentagon? You know, none of us had argued that a missile hit the Pentagon. They were, they'd gotten in their head that that was the, <laughs> I don't know. It was just so ridiculous that we just kept saying, what in the world is, are you trying to say with that? And he never could explain it. I think they were trying to debunk uh, loose change. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were trying to debunk loose change with that. But, again, the the scale is so off. And that's not in the late – that was in the early loose change. That's not in loose change final cut. That's not in the new uh, 9-11 American coup loose change that's coming out this week. Um, They know that. They just – I don't Apples and oranges. They, they were out to, as I say, I think they were just out to try to make us look uh, silly here before uh, 